Hello, this is Project 2, The Introduction of Different Clustering Methods, by Stephen Mahoney and Kathy Liu. Instead of two clustering methods we learned in class, which are hierarchical and k-means clustering methods, we're going to talk a little bit about four other useful clustering methods. Two are hybrid, and the other two are new, more advanced cluster clustering methods for more difficult data in real life. To start, we want to give an introduction about supervised and unsupervised learning which are two most essential fields of both data analysis and machine learning. First, supervised learning is done using a ground truth, or in other words, we have prior knowledge of what the output values for our samples should be. This picture shows a characteristic of data samples in supervised learnings. Dots and crosses are clearly labeled and obviously fell into two groups. And on the right, we can see that this data set has a clear regressional relationship. Supervised learning is typically done in the context of classification. We want to map input to output labels or regression. We want in both regression and classification, the goal is to find specific relationships or structures in the input data that allow us to effectively produce correct output data. Some common methods include regression, linear regression, logistic regression, classification, random forest, and bagged forest. Now looking at unsupervised learning, there are no labels given to the learning algorithm, leaving it on its own to find structure in its input. Unsupervised learning can be a goal in itself, discovering hidden patterns in a data or a mean towards an end, feature learning. The picture below describes data of unsupervised learnings. We do not have any criteria to subdivide these dizzy animals to groups so we can only randomly subdivide them into three subgroups without specific criteria. It's important to understand that clustering belongs to unsupervised learning. Data in clustering is not labeled and does not have clear characteristics about which group they belong to. Thus, for clustering, we can use similarity and dissimilarity to manually subdivide them. The two most basic common methods for clustering are partitional clustering, which k-means clustering, is the most commonly used one in this genre, and the other method, method is hierarchical clustering. Partitionally, algorithms are clustering techniques that subdivide the data sets into a set of k groups, where k is the number of groups pre-specified by the analysis. And from the picture, we can see that we divide the data set into three clusters based on their similarities. The second method is hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering does not require to pre-specify the number of clusters to be generated. The most common way for data visualization of hierarchical clustering is a dendrogram. We can also subdivide this clustering by using Euclidean distance to measure similarity and dissimilarities between data samples. We can also see that when the cutoff number is different, we can have different subgroups. However, k-means clustering has limitations. It requires the user to specify the number of clusters in advance and select initial centroids randomly. The final k-means clustering solution is very sensitive to this initial random selection of cluster centers. And even though we use the elbow method to choose the number of k's, we still don't have a clear standard for choosing. Thus, we want to introduce a hybrid method that combines k-means and hierarchical clustering methods together, which is hierarchical k-clustering k-means clustering, or hk-means in short. The algorithm is summarized as followed. First, compute hierarchical clustering and cut the tree into k clusters. Next, compute the center of each cluster. Then, compute k-means by using the set of cluster centers as the initial cluster center. The second hybrid method we are going to talk about is hierarchical clustering on principal components or HCPC, which combines almost everything we've learned in class. Principal component methods such as PCA, CA, MCA, FAMD, MFA, and hierarchical clustering and partitioning clustering, particularly the k-means method. There are many reasons for us to use HCPC. For a large continuous da variables data set, principal components analysis can be used to reduce the dimension of data into a few continuous variables containing the most important information in the data. 
the PCA step can be considered as a denoising step, which can lead to a more stable clustering. And for categorical data set, in order to perform clustering analysis on categorical data, the corresponding analysis, CA, for analyzing a contingency table, and the multiple correspondence analysis, MCA, for analyzing multidimensional categorical variables, can be used to transform categorical variables into a set of few continuous variables, i.e. the principal components. The cluster analysis can then, can then be applied on the MCA or CA results. The algorithm of the HCPC method is as follows. First, we need to calculate principal components of the data, PCA, CA, or MFA, depending on the types of variables in the data set and the structure of the data set. At this step, we can choose the number of dimensions to be retained in the output by specifying the argument NCP. Next, compute hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering is performed using Ward's criterion on the selected principal components. Ward's criterion is used in the hierarchical clustering because it is based on multi-dimensional variants like principal component analysis. The next step is to choose the number of clusters based on the hierarchical tree. An initial partitioning is performed by cutting the hierarchical tree. Then, perform k-means clustering to improve the initial part partition obtained in hierarchical clustering. The final partitioning solution obtained after consolidation with k-means can be slightly different from the one obtained with the hierarchical clustering. Next, we're going to talk about fuzzy clustering. This is an alternative to k-means clustering, where each data point has membership coefficient to each cluster. The fuzzy c-means FCM algorithm is one of the most widely used fuzzy clustering algorithms. The central rate of each cluster is calculated as the mean of all points, weighted by their degree of belonging to the cluster. The algorithm goes as follows. First, use Euclid Euclid lean distance to calculate dissimilarity matrix. Next is membership. This is a matrix containing the degree to which each observation belongs to a given cluster. Column names are the clusters and rows are the observations. And third, Dunn's partition coefficient, FK, of the clustering, where K is the number of clusters. Another limitation of hierarchical and k-means clustering is that it only works well for compact and well-separated clusters and severely affected by the presence of noise and outliers in the data. So next we introduce the DB scan or the density-based clustering. As you can see in the image, this includes two oval clusters, two linear clusters, one compact clusters, and a lot of outliers. Two important parameters are required for DB scan. Epsilon, also known as EPS or n minimum points labeled as min points. The parameter EPS defines the radius of neighborhood around a point x. It's called the epsilon neighborhood. The parameter of min points is the minimum number of neighbors with within EPS radius. Min points, a larger data set, the larger the value of min points should be chosen. Min points should be chosen at least three epsilon. The value for epsilon can be chosen using a k distance graph, plotting the distance to the k equal min points nearest neighborhood. Good values at epsilon are where this plot shows a strong bend. And then next in the algorithm, we want to define three terms, direct density reachable, density reachable, and density connected. Here are the references we used throughout this project to collect our data and our information. We want to thank you for watching.